The approach to developing this program was very much because we felt there was a unique opportunity for SLAC and Stanford to work together in a new way in the biomedical sciences, especially because of the advances in cryo-electron microscopy. Our facility provides uh, a state-of-art uh, facility for the global scientific community and also our training uh, uh, infrastructures also can teach new users to acquire all the necessary skills to practice these types of uh, scientific investigations. SLAG is a national laboratory which have other branches of uh, uh, physical techniques which the chemists and biologists use so cryo electron microscopy just add on our portfolio that would uh, allow the users to use the electron instead of photons. One can now begin to look at the structures of the molecule in motions. In other words, when we take a population of images from uh, purified biological molecules, one can use the software to sort out the images at different conformational states. So as we saw, our SLAC become a hub for structural biology determinations. The cryo-EM program that has been developed at Stanford and SLAC is, I believe, very user-friendly and it can address the needs and goals of people who are well aware of the tools and what they can do, as well as people who are completely new to these kinds of ways of addressing uh, experiments in biosciences particularly. I think the other advantage is that the program here is part of the NIH National Center program which provides resources. The tools that are now available at the uh, CryoEM facility have really expanded what can be done. What's been developed here and what's accelerating all of the biology understanding cell processes is the combination of what's called fib milling, focused ion beam milling, in which you can literally go layer by layer through the cell. And if you combine that with cryo-electron uh, tomography, you can see those structures. What we have here is a very large suite of cryo-EM and cryo-ET instrumentation and X-ray capabilities for the most complex projects that many researchers bring to us. And so that together, we consider really being a one-stop shop for structural molecular biology work. We are the biggest in the US in the way that we have a very large collection or a suite of high-performing instruments. We have the supporting capabilities in labs, in other instrumentation, and computation capabilities. We also have a high level of expertise and we provide that together uh, to give our user community what we think is and strive for an excellent capability. So this has been, I think, for our field, um, a long-awaited moment. Cryolium is the perfect technique for looking at RNA molecules. We were able to visualize RNAs that have been refractory for, for four decades uh, to structural biology, and we were able to visualize RNAs that didn't even exist you know, a few weeks before in the context of this pandemic. But we've also learned that it's not just that cryolium is the perfect technique for RNA. In many ways, RNA is the perfect molecule for pushing the limits of cryolium. And so, uh, again, through our work here at S2C2, our, uh, we've set records for the smallest molecules that you can image through cryolium, and we're now working on ways to try to resolve the motions of, of molecules in a way that just that goes well beyond what's been done before. And we're bringing to bear not just uh, you know, cutting-edge biochemistry to prepare the samples, but we're also bringing to bear cutting-edge um, uh, microscopic tools as well as AI. We're very lucky because we happen to be, our secret sauce is proximity and we have fantastic collaborators. So we have a great pipeline where we can work with our colleagues up here at SLAC and access the cryo uh, EM facilities to really provide unprecedented types of answers to critical questions in our drug development process. The ability to integrate this technology and approaches into our translational pipeline 
is really accelerating the development of, of whole new classes of, of drugs. Cryo-electron microscopy and cryo-electron tomography have become integral parts of our research. We use cryo-electron microscopy to define the structure and the mechanism of these chaperones that help fold proteins. Using cryo-AM, we can understand how they bind proteins and help them fold and how they uh, help them maintain their integrity. Access to this facility is going to be transformational for my research because the increasing power of these cryo-imaging technologies allow us to access areas of biology and ask questions that would not be possible in any other way. And I think that the integration of the biochemical, cell biological and genetic experiments that we do in my group with the novel imaging modalities that are developed and improved by this facility will create a very powerful synergy that will allow us to study problems such as Alzheimer's or aging or cancer in ways that would not be possible five years ago. I have trained graduate students and postdocs myself over many years and it is really a joy to see how they grow and express and get on the path for their own science. And I see that through the centers we have that capability and it's part of our mission. There is so much that we can offer. We can offer instrumentation, methods, know-how, science, and we bring that to them in addition to what they also get at their home institution. So I find it very inspiring. As a matter of fact, I find it awesome.